Kira Nahua Ma. We're going to be doing a learn video today and we're going to be looking at uh, the stream that runs near my house. Now this stream is actually a stormwater culvert and it's important that uh, you can learn a lot of things from the environment around your house and I'm pretty sure I've said this in a video before but I strongly believe that um, and the reason that is is because you can observe a lot of things in your local environment. Now I'm quite lucky I have a like a forest just here behind my house um, and it's full of native trees and there's all kinds of wildlife living in there, birds and whatnot. Um, but that uh, a small stormwater culvert or a stream uh, basically weaves its way through that forest as well. So we're going to look at some of the things inside that far uh, inside that stream. Sorry. Um, the important thing to know about the stream, in particular, is roughly about two years ago, in 2015, uh, it was quite a narrow culvert. And what used to happen is, in heavy rain, it had flood the neighbouring houses' backyards, um, and so they widened it. And it took quite a it was a bit of a process, um, and now it's twice as wide as what it used to be. Um, and I used to go in there quite a lot and make observations of the animals that lived in there and there's fish and eels and all kinds of stuff um, and I made it clear to the council that were uh, that were taking part in engineering this new the widening of the culvert that there were living things in there and they've actually gone to quite great lengths and you know props to them for trying to maintain the ecosystems that are in there and they made uh, indentation in pots for the animals to live in which is quite important during those heavy rains when the water does move through there and it turns from a creek to a river quite quickly so let's go we'll have a look and hopefully there's something that I can show you that's living in there okay Ngahoma you can see here that we're at this the stream this this culvert um, it's obviously a man-made stream but I believe back in the day it uh, was more of a natural stream that ran and weaved its way through the hill, hill crest and north coat area and out into the ocean uh, which it still does now it goes out I'm, I'm pretty sure out to what's called Tufts Crater which is um, a mangrove swamp that's been created by a volcanic eruption now you can see here that this is basically all just stormwater runoff and it comes all the way from the back end of Hillcrest, where I live, suburban Auckland. There's one of the um, inlets there, outlets I should say. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to get in here, sorry, get in here, and we're going to be walking off underneath that bridge and around the bend, because um, I know that there's some things living under the next bridge along. Okay, so bear with me. Now what we're looking at here is... Um, it's very hard to tell, but uh, there's a series of depressions in the floor of the culvert here. Um, so where these rocks are here, this is this is designed obviously to hold it all together, but also for vegetation that's floating in the river, uh, like natural water vegetation, for it to grab onto and cling to and grow. Um, and that provides um, places for the living things like eels and small fish to live. Now this depression, like I was saying before, is for the small fish in that to live in and hide in when the, the river gets up, when the stream gets up. Now recently I saw the stream and it goes right up to the retaining wall up there and right up to the retaining wall on this side. Now the original stream ran on this side and this side here, this is the new side, but uh, it was quite often it had get up in line with this wall. Okay, we're going to keep going so we can see if we can find some living thing. Okay, now it's a bit echoey at the moment so I'm going to talk a little bit quieter so hopefully you can hear me. But um, I'm underneath the bridge now and I've seen my first eel. Now the eels that tend to live in this, this part of the bridge tend to be a little bit smaller, territorially wise anyway. And that's um, because the bigger eels want the more open water. It's quite shallow here. If you can, I'll just show you a picture of my gumboot. See, it's only a couple of inches deep here. And in this middle section, maybe six inches deep at the very, very most. But I'm just going to get in close. And you can see here, uh, the torch isn't making much of a difference. 
but you can see there that's an eel's tail. Okay, so I'm just going to gently move the rock. Normally I wouldn't do this, I wouldn't bug him, but just so you can actually see that I'm, I'm in a, essentially a stormwater drain and there are things living in here. And that's what I find cool about learning about your, your, your um, close environment. Now he looks like he's quite a long fella, so I'm just going to gently move this, and they're quite fast. Okay, that's him. Just calmly there. They're such a beautiful creature. I really love eels. Um, in New Zealand, the Māori word for eel is tuna. Um, so if you hear someone talking about tuna in New Zealand, it might not necessarily be referring to the fish. Generally it's referred to as the fish. But in New Zealand, tuna is also referred to as eel. Okay, And there's a lot of children's stories uh, that talk about the eel, uh, particularly the magic tuna of Champion Street. It's a classic New Zealand story. So we're going to keep moving along because we're going to find guys, uh, eels in here probably four times this size. Okay, we're back in the whole mark. I'm going to try and talk a little bit louder this time. I, I know it's a bit echoey, but I'm actually under a road bridge. Now this is where I've, in the past, I've found a lot of larger eels. Um, and the trouble is, is I don't know if I'm going to find any today. Normally the level of the water is a lot higher than this. Um, I have found ones in here before, about as thick as my arm. And for some reason, they're just not here. Now what I think has happened, is we had a cyclone recently. We're at the tail end of actually two cyclones here in Auckland and this stream was as big as it gets. Now what concerns me is that it's washed the larger eels that have nowhere to hide in this point of the river away. So we're going to do a little bit of walking and scanning and see if we can see any. And if I, the reason I've got the video on and you know we're looking for stuff at the same time is um, because if we do see anything I can quickly show you but it's not looking promising at this stage okay back again guys we're back under where we the bridge where we originally started from and we're back with our friend this little guy here um, now I had a bit of a theory as to, like, I've, I've looked all along the watercourse from this bridge to the next bridge. Uh, beyond that bridge, it turns into a natural creek slash river system that gets about six feet deep and maybe about eight feet wide. Um, and what I think is after the cyclones that have happened in the, recent, the last couple of weeks, that the larger stuff and things that couldn't quite find a hiding spot were washed out. Now normally I'd be able to find small fish in here and all kinds of things but sadly all I've been able to find is this guy which is still cool. It's good that um, something is alive in here and doing well. Um, as you can see like the water quality in here at the moment is quite good um, because those storms have washed all of the, the gunk and stuff that you'd normally find in a storm water culvert out. Um, <clears throat> So yeah, like I emphasized earlier in the video, it's important to investigate your local area, um, your local environments, and see what lives in them, because it makes you feel more passionate about the, not only the area that you live, but um, preserving that ecosystem for the things that live in it. And that's, um, that's a really important thing to do. It's, you know, you can, you can, if you want to save the world, you've really got to start from your backyard. And I'm, I'm glad that this guy lives in here. Um, if you like this video, please hit subscribe. Uh, and just a, re a reminder, next time we'll be doing a make video. Uh, ka kite anō, and I'll see you guys later.